Hi. Hey, be seated. I want to welcome you if you're listening online and welcome you guys again to Eternal Rock Church. So good to have you guys. Um, again, we've been talking about this, uh, uh, this whole idea of uh, spiritual detox. And, but before we get to our, our message today, um, if you are fasting, and again, we, we, we've said this a few times already, if, uh, if you're praying, I just want to encourage you to keep doing that. Um, I, uh, for, for the past probably three or four months, I've had these really bad headaches. And during this fast, uh, Evie asked me yesterday, are you having your headaches anymore? And I'm, I, I forgot. And honestly, I don't even have my headaches anymore. I feel really good. Um, we've given up. Uh, we're basically following it pretty strictly. Uh, no meat, no sugar, um, uh, no caffeine, uh, all veganish, you know, uh, type of uh, 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 fast. And so it's killing me to not have a steak. Um, it's killing me not to have coffee in the morning. Um, and it, it's uh, killing me not to have some kind of sweets. But um, as Pastor Bethel said, every time I get those urges, um, I just remember that this is a sacrifice for the Lord. And so I hope you're on the text message list because we are sending you daily prayer lists uh, to keep up with. And so when you get that text message, it's, just not, it's not the same message. When you click on the link, there's new things to pray for every single day. And so if you're new to prayer, that actually helps you. You don't even have to think of a prayer. You're like, God, I don't know. Oh, here's one. All right. So let me use that one and that'll help you. Okay. So I just really want to encourage you to, to participate in this and just see what God does uh, in your life. And I've heard so many different things about just the fast alone, um, people sleeping better, uh, people um, feeling healthier, feeling lighter, losing weight. Some people, uh, uh, Sam said he lost like, I don't know, 11 pounds, something like that in, in one this week. I lost about three or four pounds myself. Um, so there's, there's benefits to it, uh, you know, outside of, you know, getting close to God, which is the biggest benefit, okay? So um, are we ready for part two here today of Spiritual Detox? Uh, a few years ago, uh, Pastor Craig Rochelle came out with a book called Soul Detox. And every once in a while, we take a book that inspires us and we rework it and, and, and teach it the way we would know and learn it here best at our church. And that's kind of what we did. And so if you um, have, uh, if you want to go deeper into uh, what we're, we're talking about or, or explore some more um, topics, you can, you can read that book, Soul Detox, by, by Craig Groeschel. Um, well, let's get started into uh, part two. Uh, every year, um, I get sick. How many are those annual sick people? Like, some people are monthly sick people. Are like, you're, you're sick again? Really? Like, no, I'm an annual sick person. I get sick at least once every winter, and it's not fun. I get really congested. I get headaches. I get a cold. I get a fever, and nobody likes to be around me because, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, they don't want to get sick either, so it's lonely, right? So, but I, I, it never fails. No matter what I do, I take two showers a day, wash my hands, use, you know, all the disinfectant, whatever we have in, in, in our world today, and I, and I still get sick. And I was telling the first service today, I think it's your guys' fault, really. Because I do my part, right? I do my part, but you guys want to shake my hand and hug me and everything. And, and uh, no, no, but really, um, here's, here's the thing. Uh, in my life, the, the, what God has me doing in my life is, is not only pastoring the best church in the world, right, right here, but um, I also, as you guys know, I teach classes at the gym, and so I, I did a little estimation, and I, and I run into about, I, I interact with about 300 people a week, and so when you're interacting with that many people, especially at the gym where there's, you know, sweaty towels and, and everybody's touching all the equipment, there, there's something that I pick up every time, so that's why I'm blaming everybody else and, and, and not myself. No, but if I interact with a whole lot of people, it, it actually feels like when I visit Pastor Bethel's house, I'm like, man, there's so many people here. Like, what? You're like, geez. Like, hey, did I say hi to you? I've been here for a couple hours, but I didn't notice you in the corner there. No, but uh, um, no. So anyway, does anybody get sick like that? You get sick? No. Um, how many are really pretty much, you think your immune system is built up, you're pretty strong, you don't get sick? Any person that, that it's very rarely that I get sick, um, good for you, whatever, you know. Uh, but, you know, if, if you're one of those people, um, may God continue to give you health. 
Uh, here's what I want to talk about today. Some of us, um, if not all of us in a certain area, a certain place in, in our lives, we've built up an immune system, not just for being, getting sick, but we've built up an immune system for things that we probably shouldn't be ingesting in our world and in our culture today. Things that, that wouldn't, wouldn't really please God and things that actually we're immune to. So when we hear them or when we see them, somebody else might say, really? But you would say, what? Right? Have you ever been that? Have you ever maybe been in that situation where everybody's like, really? And you're just like, what? So I want to talk about that area in your life where you're saying like, what? Like, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that or I don't feel like there's any, that I'm hurting myself because how many know wh- whether you realize or not, you pick up, you can pick up germs from the world everywhere, right? Things that, things that get you sick and you don't realize because you're so immune, you're so used to it. You, it's, it's like part of your regular diet that you're okay with, with listening, hearing, talking, gossiping, whatever it is in your life that you don't realize that this, this thing, whatever this might be, this, this toxic place in your life is actually preventing you from growing spiritually, because let's face it, a lot of us, like we said last week, um, we, we do everything we possibly can to get close to God every year, and it just doesn't seem like it's working. It seems like, well, I'm, I'm praying, I'm still praying, I'm going to church, uh, I'm doing this fast thing, except for yesterday I had my coffee, but I had to, you know, and you know, you're, you're, you're doing everything you can, but it just feels like you can go further with God, but you don't know what's stopping you. And today, my hope and my prayer is that I don't offend you, but that I point out some things that you may not realize that are toxic in your life, okay? So just right up front, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, it, it, might, it, it might be, you might feel like it's a little overboard, or you might feel like, geez, he's extreme, but I just really want you to hang in there with me today. Okay, I really, I really want you to hang in t- there t- with me today. And I want you to have this question on your mind the whole day today. Is what I want more important than pleasing God? This is the question that I want you to just let sink in your heart for the next 30 minutes. Is what I want more important than pleasing God? Because let's face it, there are things that we know about that we want that don't please God. How many would agree with that? I already know, right? So some of us, we would say, I know the things that don't please God, but I just kind of want them. I just want to keep watching that or going there or listening to that or eating that or whatever it is. And, and I know it doesn't please God, but I just, I just kind of want it, right? I just want to keep doing it. And so we know that. And then there are other things that I may point out today that you don't realize that you've been doing so long. You just don't even realize that, man, that's actually affecting my relationship and my walk with the Lord, and I didn't realize it because I'm sort of immune to that thing in my life. So, so the biggest thing is I want you to re- ask this question is what I want more important than pleasing God. And, and remember, if you've placed your faith in Jesus Christ, if you con- would consider yourself a Christ follower, it doesn't matter if you know a little or you know a lot, you're just, you just have placed your faith in, in Jesus um, you, the Bible teaches that you no longer belong to the kingdom of this world, but you belong to God's kingdom. And so we, we, we transferred residency. We don't live under the rules and the guidelines of this world and what the world thinks is okay and what the world would say, this is okay, that's okay, do that, nobody will judge you, no one, no. no. We live under God's kingdom now. And when you move to somebody else's house or when you go to a different state or a different country, the rules and and what's expected of you is different, right? And so when we talk about these things, I want you to not only ask this question, but think about, okay, I don't know if I completely agree with what he's saying, but I have to remember and I have to process that I actually do live in another kingdom and does what I do or have been doing belong in this kingdom that I'm currently in. And process that, process that. One of the scriptures that, that you've probably heard before is, is the one in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. And it basically says, don't you realize that you're what? Your body is the temple of who? The Holy Spirit, when, when you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you, okay? And so when you put other stuff, you're like, you're, you're invading space that you gave up to Jesus, 
in your heart. So the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you, right, and was given to you by who? By God. You do not belong to yourself for God bought you with a what? What is that high price? The life of Jesus on the cross, right? And, and so remember that as we tie, and I just, I just have to say the kingdom thing, and I have to say this because I know that, that, um, that what I might say today has the potential to really, like, I don't know if offend, but really just kind of say, I don't know if I agree. But I, I want you, again, to hang in there with me because I think that you're gonna, you're, God's going to show you some cool things today. Um, our culture that we live in, again, the culture that we live in says that there are so many things that are okay that God would say, I don't recommend that. And I don't think you should do that because it's not good for you. It's not healthy for you. It's not beneficial for you. Um, every, uh, uh, how many, um, let's, start with, let's start with one thing here. How many like a good movie? I mean, like, I mean we, would, we would be kidding if we wouldn't say we love to watch a good movie, right? And I remember um, uh, years ago, there was a movie that came out and many of you, um, and, and, and you don't need to say, you raise your hand if, you know, if you've seen this, but many of you, um, maybe you went out and saw this movie right here, okay? This was the original. There was three parts to this, to this movie. And um, before, I, uh, before I, I seen this movie, and I, and I, I confess, um, somebody told me about it, and they said it was the funniest movie ever. And this person that told me that was, was a Christian, and they said, hey, you know, uh, I saw it, and it was funny, and you, you got to see it. And, uh, and I, I started watching, and I'm like, what is going on with this movie, right? Um, and, and, and here's the thing, um, and, and I'm not going to ask you if you watched it or not. I'm, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. If, if you've ever watched this movie or you know about this movie, I don't know if you realize this or not, but 90, there's 91 F-bombs in this movie. The movie's only 90 minutes. That means there's one every minute on average, okay? If you didn't notice that, you know, maybe you're immune to something you shouldn't be. You see what I'm saying? If you, if you, if you, because the people that told me about this, I went back and said, hey, did you notice there is so, many, so, so much this and so much that? They're like, there was? I'm like, yeah, what? You know, the whole, did you, did you realize what? Right? So, so there's, there's a lot in here. Um, there's 41 words with the S word. There's nine slang terms uh, for, for, for male body parts. There, there's all kinds of stuff in here. In fact, there's a website that you can go and find all the statistics. And I know these, these are a little small, but I'll tell you what they say. Everything in red is extreme in this movie. So if you were to, uh, to, to gauge um, alcohol and drugs, it's heavy in this movie. If you were to gauge how uh, much disrespect and bad attitude, it's extreme in this movie. If you looked at profanity, sexual uh, sex and nudity, it's extreme in this movie. So everything in red means that it's extreme in this movie. But for most of us in our world, our culture, they would say it's the best movie ever. Right? And maybe, maybe you didn't see that movie, but maybe you saw this movie. And just watching the trailer alone, um, I, I, yeah, um, this movie, um, it, was, it was an original, or, 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 or like a third, I don't know how many parts to the vacation series, The Lampoon's Vacation. And, and I, want, I want to show you the statistics on this one. There's at least 55, 51 F words. And there's all, I have all the statistics here, but look at how much the red goes up here. So you got blood and gross stuff, extreme, uh, imminent behavior, extreme, music, inappropriate music, extreme, profanity, extreme, sex and nudity, extreme. And that's the extreme. The ones in purple are heavy. That's, that's just pointing out the extreme things in this uh, 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 movie. In fact, the only thing that's mild is, is, is the tense scenes and the music, right, in the background. And smoking, there's just a little bit of smoking in there. So, so you won't be tempted to smoke if you watch this, this movie. But that's um, some stats on this movie, right? Um, don't raise your hand, all right? Do not raise your hand, okay? Um, straight out of Compton, right? Um, I grew up when these guys, their story was happening. And so I'm like, this is, you know, I want to see this movie, right? I want to see it. We turned it on. We're like, ah, we, you know, 
And, and again, I'm not acting. Please don't hear me say I, I'm holy, I'm perfect. Don't, don't hear me say that. Um, but I do have, I, 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 I can only take so much of, of, of the profanity and things like that, and I just can't, can't continue with that. It's just me, okay? I'm not saying that's you, but I'm saying this movie right here, okay, was one of, it was grossed. I, I, don't, I didn't get the stats on what it grossed, but check out the, the uh, stats on this movie. Look at the red lines on this one, okay? So you got alcohol and drugs, let's say it together, extreme. You have disrespectful bad attitude, extreme. Are you in this with me? Are we doing this? Okay. Um, guns and weapons, Extre- they should have had it over here, right, with guns and weapons. Imminent behavior. Extreme. Music that's inappropriate. Extreme. That should be over here somewhere, right? Profanity. Extreme. Sex and nudity. Extreme. Smoking, or wait, smoking, moderate. Yeah, you're a little closer. Um, topics to talk about. There's extreme topics uh, in this movie. Now, if you thought 91 F-bombs was bad in, in The Hangover, there's at least 293 in this movie. And, that, and, and, and it's funny because when you read about this, this movie, it says those are the ones they could hear, but not the ones that are, be sh- that are shouted out in the background in the fight scenes and, and, and when all the chaos is going on. There's probably a lot more than 293. And that's just the F word. That has n- that's not even all the other words um, in uh, uh, that, that, all the other cuss words that are in it. Do you think that has the potential to affect you? As entertaining as as it is, and as much as we want to hear the stories, do you think that has the, the potential to, at some point, we're letting all that in affect us? How about music? And there's so many, so many places we can, we can go with this, but Allie Golding, she's, she's a very popular artist right now. Um, one of her songs is called On My Mind. You've probably heard it before. Maybe you have it as your ringtone. I don't know. But here's, here, here's, here's the, some of the lyrics to that song. Whether you realize it or not, here's what you're ingesting, all right, when you hear. It's a little blurry how the whole thing started. That implies I might have been drinking, right? Um, I don't even really know what you intended. Thought you were cute and you can make me jealous. Poured it out, so I poured it out. Next thing you know, I'm in a hotel with you, right? And, and it goes on and on. You, you were talking deep like it was mad love. You wanted to hurt. You, you wanted my heart, but I just wanted your tattoos. I mean, it, it's, it's not anything. These lyrics are nowhere near what God would want us to live out or be or have or to do. I mean, it just wouldn't be anything, right? It, it, it wouldn't. Or how about this guy? Who, who's this guy right here? We know who he is, right? Don't act all holy, right? We know it's Drake, okay? It's Drake, He has a song called what? Hotel what? Bling, hotline bling or whatever, not hotel. Hotline hotline bling, right? So you're probably hearing it right now as I say that, right? Hotline bling, you used to call me on my my cell phone, whatever, um, late night when you need my love. And we all know what the late night call means. I don't have to explain that to you, right? We, I don't have, you, you don't have to, you know what that means and you know the implication and we're just, just ingesting all of this stuff, right, in, in, into, our, into our lives and we don't even think twice about it. We don't even think twice about the message that's being preached as our kids overhear this stuff, as we just let it sink in and don't really think twice about it. We don't, we don't think about it, but it has a bigger impact than you would ever realize. If the kids of today, the high school students and even middle school students are over promiscuous, don't you think that this is kind of giving them some permission to do that? And it's kind of saying, hey, this is just how life is. Call me up at night if you want, you know? This is just how life is. We might go out and we might end up somewhere. That's kind of how life is. And, and, and don't you think at some point that's affecting and invading and intoxicating and, 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 and filling our minds full of, full of germs that have the potential to speak louder than God's voice in our lives? I, I'm willing to bet, and I don't know all of us, and I'm not judging but I, and, and because I know me, I'm willing to bet that for, for most of us who have libraries of music, 
you have more music that is ungodly than you do that is godly. I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that. I'm willing that you have a small little part of, of maybe a couple of newsboys and whatever, and then everything else is just everything else. I'm willing to bet that. And no elbows and no whatever, but I, I'm willing to bet that's, that's what it is. And, and I want you to hear me. I don't want you to hear me wrong. I don't, I, I don't think all music is bad. Okay, I don't think all music that's non-Christian is bad. I don't think all non-movies are bad, but there are some that are worse than others. And there are some that you should really just kind of think about, what am I really listening to today? Well, what is that, how is that affecting me? And I just want you to ask yourself that question. If you're in a place of influence, such as parents, and, 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 you, and you, you display this for your kids, does that affect them at all? Ask yourself that question. What am I teaching them? What am I allowing them to inhale, ingest through their ears, through their eyes? And is it helpful for them? Is it hurting them? I don't know. You have to ask yourself that question. But let me ask you another question. If I was up here preaching right now and I just dropped a big F-bomb, what would you think? First of all, I would start sweating. I'd be like, <laughs> did I say that out loud? No. Um, I, I bet, I'm willing to bet if I did that, you would not be able to think about the rest of the sermon because all of your thoughts would be on, why did he say that? I can't believe he said that. Did you hear him right? Right? What, what's going on? Right? Was that a breath mint or what was that that he put in his mouth? Right? I'm willing to bet, Right? Because the power of only one bad word in this context changes everything, but we're okay with listening to 293 in another context. Now, I know, listen, I know, I know, I know it's a different context. So I know that you might be saying, all right, but this is church. You just don't do that in church. I understand that, and I agree, and I'm not arguing with that. That's a movie. That's just what movies are. But, but are we saying, if, if that's what we're saying, are we saying this? Are we saying that I'm this way at church and this way outside of church? Is this not okay at church, but it's somehow okay at church a hundred times more than it would never be at church here? You see what I'm saying? Do I live this way here, live this way here? Please don't discover me here, and please, you don't know me, you don't want to know me here, right? How, is that, to me, that might be living a little inconsistent with what we think and what we say and what we who we say that we are and we love and we want to serve. And could it be that if you are allowing all this, it's the reason why your walk with God is congested. There's mocos in the way, right? There's boogers in the way. There's a cough in the way and you don't realize that you can't breathe in God the way you should because you're congested with all of this other stuff. In the Bible, um, Paul said this. He said, don't you realize that this what? This sin is like a little yeast. What do we use yeast for? For bread. Okay, that spreads throughout the whole batch of dough. Get rid of the old yeast, right, by removing this wicked person from among you or thing or song or whatever it is. Then you will be like a fresh batch of dough made without yeast, which is what you really are. It only takes a little bit of yeast, right, for the whole bread to what? To rise. It just spreads throughout the whole, the whole batch of dough, and, and, and it affects everything. You know, I'm, I'm willing to bet that most of us, probably all of us, you won't go to Chipotle anytime soon, right? Have you, have you heard the E. coli issues they're having? So it, it, you, I'm not going to go there because I don't want to get sick, right? Probably the chances are a little small that, that, that the ones that are still open are infected, but I'm still not going to go there. Are you going to go there? I mean, I'm not going to go there because there's a small chance that I'm going to get sick. So if I wouldn't go to a restaurant for one chance that I might, even though it could be super clean right now, why would we take chances in other areas of our lives? Why, why would we do that? Some of you won't even eat when somebody double dips, right? And it's your family member. It's your husband or wife. You're like, ugh. They're like, we kiss, you know? Like, 
That shouldn't be a problem. Why are you double dipping, right? Because we, we're so afraid of those germs, but yet in other areas of our lives, it doesn't, we don't care, right? It, it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you a story, and this is Craig's story, so don't, don't judge me, all right? Um, there's a story of a 12-year-old boy who uh, comes home. He's hanging out with his friends, and, and they rented a, a movie at, at their, one of their parents rented a movie at Red Box, and he comes home and says, Mom, can I go across the street and watch the movie? She's like, well, what, what rating is it? She's like, it's PG-13, and she's like, okay, but does it have any bad stuff in it? And, and her son looks at him, and he goes, just a little, just a little. And she goes, all right, I'll let you watch it, you know, later on, right, this evening? Yeah, 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 later on. Okay, so he's happy. He gets to watch the movie later. So she decides she's going to teach him a lesson, and she picks the, his favorite brownies. And so she makes them from scratch, and, and she, she gets them ready. The only difference is she goes out into the yard, okay, and gets a teaspoonful of, uh, of their dog Ginger's poop, right? And puts it in the batch, okay? And stirs it around, stirs it around, stirs it around. Bakes the brownies. They come out. They smell the same, right? Because it's just a little, okay? And she, she calls her son. Hey, I baked your favorite brownies. He's like, oh my God, you know, wait, what? Before you eat that, let me tell you about the secret ingredient. Ginger helped us out today. And she told her daughter what he did, or her son, excuse me, what, what she put in, in. And she goes, gross, mom, why would you ever do that? She goes, it's just a little. It's just a little. It's not going to hurt you. You probably won't even taste it, right? I think we get the point, right? That even a little, I mean, for some of us, we let a lot, but for some of us, even a little, we, 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 we're okay with a little at times. And, and, and it's just, a little could be too much. A little yeast can go a long way. You know, the world that we live in, the culture that we live in, they're not trying to please God. And so we don't have to take cues from what everybody else is doing. We shouldn't. And we shouldn't even expect them to because they don't know God. But, but we know God. And from that, we should say, God, I want to take my cues from your word, from what you say, and not from what everybody else is doing or watching or seeing. Being a Christian in this culture is not always easy. In fact, uh, oop, make sure I went into a little mode here. Here's what uh, Matthew 7, 13, and 14 says. You could enter God's kingdom only through what? The narrow gate. The highway to hell is, how many heard that song before? Right. Just kidding. No, the highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, right? And the road is difficult and only what? A few ever find it. And so the Bible isn't saying that, that every Christian that, 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 that lives a certain way is, is going to hell, but the Bible is saying the Christians who actually make the right choices, there's only a few of those. And I want to be a church that's the few. That we make decisions not based off of what's okay or what we don't care about or what we think doesn't hurt us, but we make decisions off of what, God, what God's word says. He also says this in, in 1 Peter, the word of God says, for, scripture say, for, for the scriptures say, you must be what? Holy, because I am what? Holy. What makes us holy? Forgiveness, the blood of Jesus. Our walk with God, okay? We can't do it on our own. But that's what God expects of us. What he wants for us. That's what he desires of us. You know, one of the things that, the balances that we have to find 
in, in the Christian life is that we do have freedom in Christ. We do have the freedom to watch what we want to watch, to go where we want to go, to eat what we want to eat, to drive as fast as we want to drive, right? And we'll still go to heaven. We'll, we'll still, we're, we're saved, and, and God's not going to not let you into heaven because I drive too fast to work every morning or I, or I watch this all the time. If you're saved, you're, 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 you have that choice. But here's what I want you to think about. Just because you could do something doesn't mean you should. How many hear mom's voice in that, right? Just because you could do something doesn't mean you should. Here's what Paul said. He said, you say, I'm not allowed, I am allowed, excuse me, to do anything, but not everything is what? Is good for you. And even though I'm allowed to do, what does God allow us to do? Anything. That's, that's the Bible. You're allowed to do anything. I must choose not to become a what? A slave to anything. We have the freedom to do what we want to do, but it doesn't mean we should. And it doesn't mean that it's beneficial for us. It doesn't mean it's the best thing, the best thing for us. I mean, you could, again, you could drive over the speed limit and still be a Christian. You could eat junk food and, and eat whatever you want and be unhealthy, not exercise, and you could still be a Christian. Um, you, you can, uh, uh, basically, we're allowed to do what we want and still be a Christian, but is it the right thing for you? And is it going to draw you closer to Christ? Now, again, I want to I wanna just point out that not every movie that's rated R is, is a bad movie. How many have ever seen this, this one? And so I don't want, I, I, don't, I don't think that just saying outright saying rated R movies are no good. I'm not going to say that. that. That's your choice because there's some rated R movies such as this one that will change your life. And I'm not going to say that every song out there on the radio is the worst song in the world because there's some amazing love songs. There's some amazing songs about what's going on in our world, some amazing songs that just inspire you even though they don't have anything to do with God. There's songs that, that you're going you're gonna to want to use uh, for your wedding, for, for celebrations. There's, there's a lot of stuff out there that's just beautiful. And so we're not saying that it's all wrong and just turn your back and don't ever, no, we're saying think about it. Maybe for once, think about it. Think about what the lyrics are saying. Think about who's listening and who you are influencing as this is going on around you. The Bible says this in, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 through 22. It says, but test everything that is said. Should we test some things or everything that is said? Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of what? From evil. So we're to test things. Just because so-and-so said, and just because they said it was a funny movie, just because they said you should see it, do a little homework. If you don't feel comfortable with the rating or you don't feel comfortable with the trailer of the movie, most of the time that tells you what it's going to be about. Do a little homework. Because here's, here's what the Bible says also. It says don't, don't copy what? The behavior and what? Customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by, the cha by changing the way you what? Some of us, we have such a hard time thinking positive and thinking that we're worth something or thinking that we have purpose or thinking that we could continue to serve God or whatever. It's because we have so much of the other voices coming into our lives from all the other sources that we allow. We just eat it all up, right? We hear it the movies, the music, the books, the articles, the internet, the websites, that we, we battle in our minds the way we think. But God's saying if we don't copy the behaviors and, custom, and customs, it's going to change the way we think. And then you will learn to know what God's will is for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And I don't know a Christian that has ever told me, I don't, know, I don't want to know God's will. Don't tell me God's will. Every Christian says, I want to know what God wants me to do. I want to know what God, how he wants me to live. 
And you're going to know if you put more of what God has to say in your life versus what the world has to say. You know, it, it's totally possible with whether you realize it or not or whether you admit it or not for what you listen to and what you hear and what you allow in to affect you. I'm sure you've heard the stories of women who have been abused verbally and mentally. And they just get to the point where they believe that they're not worth anything anymore. Even men, anybody has the potential. They believe that they're, they, they're not valid. They believe that nobody's going to love them. They believe that they'll never be who, who they want to be. They'll never reach their goals because somebody evil in their life has told them over and over again, has repeated the words, you're not worth anything. You'll never amount to anything. You're worthless. Why are you here? Get out of my life. Whatever they've said. And, and we, we, we all know people who've suffered that way. And if it's possible for people, um, for women or men, whoever it is, to be abused to the point where they believe what they're told so many times, is it not possible for what you keep hearing over and over again that you think isn't, isn't bothering you for it to affect you at some level? So as we finish today, um, I want you to ask yourselves and I want you to think about these three things here. Am I being entertained by sin? Am I being entertained by something sinful in an article, in a book, a show, a website, pornography, um, movies, music? Because just, just because it's entertaining doesn't mean it's good for you, right? Just because it makes you laugh and just because you, 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 you have a few good laughs and, and it makes you smile doesn't mean it's good for you. Is this pleasing to God? If God were here with me, and by the way, he is, because he lives in you, but just to use an analogy, if God was sitting here on the couch with us, would he be okay with this conversation or this movie or, or, or what, what we're doing right now? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. And does this lure me away from Christ? Does what I do put a distance between my relationship with God. Because again, maybe you haven't thought about it and maybe it just hasn't hit you till now. This could be the thing that's preventing you from drawing closer to God. This could be the thing that's, that's holding you up, what you allow through your eyes, what you allow in your mind that seeps down into your heart. So my prayer today is that we would ask God to create in us, as we sang earlier, a clean heart. It's a psalm that David uh, wrote, and it's also a song that Keith Green wrote a long time ago. And so I want us to stand, if we can. And we're going to sing this song together. Um, it's an older song, but the words are going to be on the screen and I really want you to, to meditate on what it says. And uh, if you would like prayer today, um, Pastor Bethel and I, we're up here. I would love to pray for you. I would love to ask God to give you the strength this year to make some, some changes and to detox a little bit more in some other areas of your life. I'm going to leave these questions up here so you can continue to look at them. But I, um, Let's sing while...